Hey, my name is Ryan Hewitt, and uh, we're here at Conway just wrapping up the Blink-182 record, uh, self-titled release that just came out. And uh, we're just talking about engineering and running and coming up through the business, as it were. And uh, I was actually a runner for nine years. So my father's a recording engineer. Very special situation for me to have uh, at, at home, like in school, or not in school, in home schooling for a few years uh, with him. But um, other than that, it's, it's the hard road coming up. It's really the hard road coming up, getting internships and running at studios and running well, in a truck, in my instance. But uh, that's pretty exciting. It has its own kind of circumstances attached to it. So I get to polish wheels instead of cleaning toilets. So, so you learned in the live recording business. Yeah, I came up in the live recording business for the, I mean, from age 13, I went on the road with him for the first time, like every summer, every Christmas break. Um, when I went off to college, I actually went to school for electrical engineering at Tufts University and kind of got a different take on, uh, on engineering, per se. Um, so rather than learning like this is a fader, I'm learning like this is controlling you know, a resistor capacitor network. And this VCA is doing this and has certain gain characteristics and uh, slew rates and all these other catchphrases that we use in the business. Um, I got to build my own amplifiers and, and do that kind of thing. So it was a, it's a different approach um, that way. And that was something that actually that my father insisted on. He's like, you know what? I can teach you how to engineer. You can learn by engineering to go to, you know, go hang out at a recording studio for a year, and you will learn how to engineer a record. Um, you know, but get yourself another education and another angle on something, just so you have your take um, and your perception of what's going on at all times. So musically, I wish I was stronger, to be perfectly honest. So uh, I recommend taking lessons at anything you can. Play and pick up anything you can. I'm a drummer. I've been a drummer since I was, uh, I guess, 11 or something like that. Uh, so learn your music, learn your theory, learn your harmony. Invaluable in the studio. Um, but as far as engineering, as far as making records, uh, studio etiquette, what to do in a studio, how to make a record, you know, general scenario, internships, being in a studio, being where records are made is the key and on any scale you can get it in. You know, If you're living in Iowa or something and there's like one studio in town, hang out at that studio wherever you can. If you need to clean the floors or clean the toilet, it's going to pay off in the long run because the more you're around records, the more you're around a studio, the more you'll learn, the quicker you'll learn, and the more robust your knowledge will be in the end. Um, there is absolutely no substitute for being in a studio. At, of, like I said, of any level. If you're in a Mackie ADAT studio, if you're working on a four track, you're learning how to bounce tracks, you're learning how to make use of four tracks before you go on to a 24 track or a 48 track or Pro Tools where you can have as many tracks as you want. It's like, if you don't know how to organize those tracks and make those tracks sound good when you have four tracks, you know, God help you when you get into a computer and, and can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to go to a school. Um, I think that that going to school, going to a school for a degree of any variety, um, will. Uh, I was talking to a friend about this recently. You learn how to learn when you're in college, so you learn. I mean, high school, you know, whatever. High school, you have to get through it, so you deal with it. But college, you're kind of there on your own, your own terms. You're there to learn, and you're there to have a good time, and you're there to party. You're there to like transition from home life and protected parent life into the real world and jumping from one to the next is really hard so going to school kind of provides that bridge and that transition so you're learning life skills more than you know pushing fader skills or resistor capacitor skills or whatever have you um, so going to a school is a good thing in that you'll have a foundation of knowledge in some field and uh, you know, in, in this business, you know, you can walk in here with a master's degree in music, and you'll still be a runner, and you'll still be going to make coffee, and you know, going to the store to get someone a toothbrush. Um, that, that part is irrelevant. Like I've seen, you know, when I was an assistant, I would see resumes coming in, like you know, from graduates of X Y Z recording school, saying, "I'm looking for a position as an engineer. I'm looking for a position as an assistant." It's like, don't kid yourself. You know, if you are just entering the business on a real level, just say, hey, I want to be a runner, I want to be an intern, and you will be there in a second. But if you say, I want to be an assistant, or I want to be an engineer, 
it's not going to happen. And it just like I've seen resumes could just go right out of the fax machine, engineer that uh, right in the trash, you know. So it's important to be extremely realistic about uh, your goals, especially at the outset of a career. You know, when you want to start in something, it's like you got to start as a runner. If you're going to go to a studio, unless you've assisted on like a thousand records, chances of getting in as an assistant right off the bat are very slim. Um, and things you need to know to be an assistant are only learned by being in a session. And again, on any level, you know, you just you get into a studio, you learn how to behave around a session. You know, and not to walk in front of the glass, or you know, not to be on the phone with your, you know, with your girlfriend in the back of the room, or whatever. Um, so it's a whole skill set. The recording process depends on the artist and what they're comfortable doing. Um, and I mean, as as an engineer, as a producer, I try not to impose my rule like this is how we're going to do it. Um, if they're comfortable with me saying, let's do it this way, this way, this way, if they're looking to me for that great, you know, I will say, this is how we're going to do it. Um, I mean, generally, like on the Blink record, we did drums first, and then we do guitars, and we do bass, um, and then we'll do vocals usually after that. And then once the foundation is down, once the bulk of the band is done with their thing, uh, it will do some keyboards, we'll do some little sound effecty things, and, you know, we'll just, we'll do some silly stuff, you know, try out different things, or like, hey, you know, I don't know about the guitar part, let's try something else, and we'll work on something else for a little while. Um, but once the basic idea of the song is down, then we'll kind of move on to um, the icing on the cake, so to speak. Um, but with other bands, they want to be in the studio, like working on a Tom Petty record. The whole band is out there all at the same time, rocking out. They finish a song, everyone kind of looks at each other like, yeah, that's the take, man. You know, and then Tom will go in, throw a vocal down real quick. Yeah, tempo's great, it feels good. All right, cool. Let's go on to the next song. <laughs> you know, and then maybe we'll come back and do a little, you know, guitar solo overdub or whatever. But usually it's done that day. Uh, vocals are done typically later for Tom, but um, uh, other things where it's like one guy's the guy, you know, like on the John Frusciante solo record, um, he and Chad Smith, the drummer from the Chili Peppers, played together guitar and drums, and uh, Josh, uh, John's partner in the record, would play bass or would play another guitar or whatever, so it'd be the three of them in a room, and they would track their thing together, and then we'd go back, maybe replace the guitars sometimes, maybe replace... Uh, the bass or whatever, do some overdubs, do some vocals. That record was more, um, not quite haphazard, but that was more of a flow where it was just train of thought. Like, oh, you know, we're working on one song. He's like, oh, hey, you know, on the other song, I want to do this thing. So take that song down, put another song up, do a little, you know, guitar bit. Oh, cool. Now on this other song, so it would be like on a given day, we'd do six or seven different songs, but little pieces of each one you know, depending on his mood. Like, sometimes he'd want to do a, a Moog part or a synthesizer part, or he bought a new toy and wants to try it on this song or whatever. So, um, there's no set rule. Um, well, I mean, I like, like I was saying, I, I, I like to think that I'm bringing all my skills to the table all the time, no matter what I'm hired as. Um, so, I mean, if, if someone's hiring me as an engineer, uh, I have no problem saying, hey, you know, it's a little pitchy, um, let's get that again, the phrasing's not quite right on that, or, or maybe try this guitar part, or try, instead of changing there, change there, or, you know, um, let's try this little part in here, let's double this, let's add a little thing. So, you know, there's always, there's always a production side kind of going on, no matter what the role. Um, if I'm mixing something, you know, they're hiring me to mix it, and in, entailed in mixing is arranging a song. You know, if there's too much stuff going on, just cut it out, you know. The best in the business do it. Tom Lord Algae does it. He'll just sit there and make cuts and you know and decide what's in and what's out, and that's the record. Um, I wish I was at such a level, but you know, in in that capacity, you know, I'm, I'm mixing a, a demo for a friend of mine, and you know, I call him up like, hey, you know, there's like 30, 30 guitars going on in this one part. We got to clear this out. Here's here's some cuts. Um, check this out. You know. Um, so and you know, with tracking, there's all different skills. Sometimes you use. There's Pro Tools, there's 2-inch, there's, you know, all these different formats. I mean, the, uh, I just worked on a John Frusciante record. We were doing 1-inch 8-track for some of it, just to get a sound. You know, he's like, I want that, you know, a 60s sound. So, um, my, uh, we were doing over at Cello, and the tech there, uh, Gary, had a, a Scully 8-track that came out of A&M Studios from 1967. So he pulled that out, polished it up, cleaned it up, and there we were, you know, working on 8-track. No punching, no erasing. Just go, you know, two tracks of drums, one track of guitars, one track of bass, and there we go. <laughs> End of story.
my first break uh, to be an engineer or um, well actually my first break was to be an assistant and I was a runner at Sony Studios in New York and one of the techs was doing a record I mean I didn't know it was a record it was like a demo kind of thing at the time with Grant Green Jr. Um, and he was calling all the assistants to get an engineer. It was like on a Saturday or something. He called every assistant in the building to get an engineer. And they're like, no, nah, man, you know, I'm doing whatever. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then he called down to the runners. And I was kind of the new guy, so he called me last. But uh, he's like, hey, you know, I'm doing this project upstairs. Uh, you want an engineer? And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Count me in. I'm there in a second. So, you know, I just kind of engineered the thing. And this other engineer came in and he was best friends with the studio manager and he heard what I was doing and saw my enthusiasm for it and went to the studio manager on Monday and said this kid is not a runner he's an assistant and I'm gonna be here for a month and he's gonna be my assistant and so um, that guy Kirk Yano is a good friend of mine and he totally gave me my break because otherwise I would have just been a runner for you know however long that would have lasted <laughs>
Um, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> I mean, the Blink record literally came out today, so or uh, today's today's Wednesday came out yesterday. So um, you know, hopefully people will be into that and like how it sounds and call me for some stuff. Uh, but you know, as an independent, it's it's tough. It's you know, it, it's I wouldn't quite call it hand to mouth, but um, you know, you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from necessarily. So uh, you know, on 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 my level, I just kind of take what I can get. You know, I don't. I'm not like, well, I'm not going to work with him unless it's just someone I can't deal with or some music that I can't stand. I do have a certain amount of integrity when it comes to you know music and personalities. There are people I can't get along with, and and that's kind of a drag. But you know, most of the time it's mind over matter with that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you could get me to do like a country record or you know like an old school or new school country record, old school country record in a heartbeat. But you know, certain things just don't quite work. <laughs>